And now we'll work through a few examples here. x squared minus 36. Well, x squared, that's obviously something squared. You can see it right there. The x is squared. This is something squared also. You recognize 36 as a perfect square. It's 6 squared. So think of this in your head as x squared minus 6 squared. And then it factors as x plus 6, x minus 6. And you can always check with a FOIL. If you do a first, outer, inner, last, the first gives you x squared. The outer terms give you, give you a minus 6x, and the inner terms give you a plus 6x. And then the last terms, 6 and negative 6, when multiplied, give you a minus 36. And when you cancel the negative 6x and the positive 6x, you can see right there, x squared minus 36, our original expression. So it's been factored. Example 11, 16 minus a squared. Think of this in your mind as 4 squared minus a squared. So there's two things squared, and we have the difference of those two things. So 4 squared minus a squared will factor as 4 plus a, 4 minus a. And if you wanted to flip this around to write the variable first, you could. That would be fine. And example 12, a squared minus 9b squared. All right, a squared, that's obviously a squared. So we have something squared here. It's an a squared minus, and we have something squared here. What, though, what squared gives me a 9b squared? Well, you should see that, it, that it's 3b. This second term here is 3b squared. Just come over here and make a note of this. 3b squared, you should be able to see that if we square 3b, we have to square both of those things in the parentheses. The 3 gets squared and the b gets squared. So that gives us the 9b squared. So I have a squared minus 3b squared. That will factor as a plus 3b times a minus 3b.